Hey everyone, today is part two of that three-part series on the three kinds of hair loss you find in Hashimoto's patients, what they mean, and what you should do about it. And today we're talking about the alopecia areata hair loss pattern. So let's get into it. All right, so the second kind of hair loss you find in Hashimoto's patients is what we call the alopecia areata pattern. Now in this type of hair loss, the hair loss is patchy. There's discrete patches of hair loss. Now that's different than what we talked about in part one. In part one, we talked about the classic low thyroid hair loss pattern, which is just diffuse thinning hair, right? Also maybe dry, coarse, brittle, but it wasn't patchy. Well, the second type of hair loss pattern you can find in Hashimoto's patients, it is patchy. Uh, it is discrete little areas of loss, and that's called alopecia areata, and that is an autoimmune cause of hair loss. So this one we don't like very much. So let's just review very quickly. What do we mean by hair loss, right? Abnormal hair loss is when you're losing more than about 50 or 100 hairs per day, right? Now, in the previous video, I talked about how thyroid hormones themselves affect hair follicle growth and hair follicle maintenance. Well, this pattern of hair loss, we don't really worry too much about the amount of thyroid hormones. We're worried about you having an additional autoimmune problem. So remember, Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism, okay? About nine out of 10 people have that. About 33% of people that are hypothyroid have hair loss. In my experience over the last 20 years, over half the Hashimoto's patients I've seen are complaining of current abnormal excessive amounts of hair loss. Now, within that though, you can have diffuse thinning hair like we talked about in part one, or you can have discrete patchy hair loss, which is this alopecia areata pattern. When you have one autoimmune condition, unfortunately, it's very easy to get another one. And the reason is, is once that kind of taboo has been broken, once your immune system's ability to tolerate self, what we call that in, in, in immunology, then it's kind of like, you know, all bets are off. Your immune system can start attacking really whatever the heck it wants. And the hair follicle is one of those things that can do that. Now, alopecia areata is kind of a, uh, a, a generic term for patchy loss, but that can progress and you can get e, uh, alopecia totalis, um, you can get alopecia universalis, essentially where you lose all of your hair. Now I have had a few cases of that over the years, uh, but the reason we really don't like the alopecia areata pattern in Hashimoto's, like what does that mean? It means that your immune system is out of control. So in Hashimoto's, uh, if you still feel bad and still have low thyroid symptoms, even though your TSH is okay and even though you take medication, that usually tells you your immune system is not really doing well because your immune system is most likely affecting your ability to use the hormones that you're taking. But beyond that, <laughs> uh, this type of hair loss is telling you your autoimmune problem is bigger than just Hashimoto's. Remember, if you've got one, it's very likely to get another, especially if you don't do the right thing. So alopecia areata is a sign, it's a warning sign that your immune system is out of control. What are you gonna do about it? Well, you're gonna have to work with someone that understands the immune system is involved with this and understand how to assess your immune system correctly. I personally like to do things like lymphocyte immunophenotyping, uh, multiple tissue uh, antibody testing. We might have to do other testing to track down where is the fire that is driving both of these autoimmune problems. Sometimes it's something like a, a, a real problem with the food. Sometimes there's a hidden infection. Sometimes there's a real problem with uh, one of the barrier systems in the body. But the point is, you're not gonna figure that out on your own. You're gonna to have to work with someone that already understands all of that and is willing to take the time to invest in figuring out what is your immunophenotype, right? Now, phenotype just means what does something look like? So immunophenotype means what does your immune system look like? And the reason I'm making a big deal out of that is because you know you can have 100 people with Hashimoto's, you can even have 100 people with Hashimoto's and this kind of hair loss, and they're all gonna have their own individual flavor of it meaning they're going to have their own fingerprint, they're going to have their own immune system fingerprint. So, for example, in this result here, you can see that, you know, this is high and this right here is high. And the thing is, now that I know that that's the problem, I can go after that, right? I can tailor my treatment to that to try to normalize those things. And the thing is, this patient's symptoms you see here, who has Hashimoto's, uh, that's not gonna tell me what this is gonna look like, right? I've gotta do the right test to be able to see what's really going on in her immune system. 
and so I can figure out how to best support it. So my recommendation is make sure that you are uh, working with someone that understands that kind of testing. Uh, the other testing I alluded to was uh, multiple tissue antibody testing. Now, why would we do that? Well, we do that because if you have this type of hair loss and you've already been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, you've already got two autoimmune problems. So it's very likely you have more than that. Uh, multiple, tissue, multiple tissue antibody testing, which I'm showing you an example here, lets uh, a doctor look for about 25 or so different autoimmune problems from one blood sample because we're looking for different levels of tissue antibodies. And I like doing this test personally because it lets us find out, okay, how bad is it? Like how many things is your immune system attacking? But also uh, it lets us refine what a person should or should not be eating based on what tissue antibodies they have. So I, I don't waste time doing IgG food sensitivity testing because that's uh, pretty much a waste of time. We could post a lot of videos about that. But we know because of cross reaction, I have a lot of videos on that you guys can look up, that there are certain foods that if you eat them are gonna have a very high chance of making these tissue antibody levels worse, right? So make the autoimmune problem worse. So I think that if you have Hashimoto's and you have this type of hair loss, uh, what you should do about it is make sure you're getting the right testing like we've talked about today. You're working someone, with someone that can be a good detective that'll take the time to do it. Because if you get the right testing, right kind of doctor, you can get better. I've had plenty of patients over the year with alopecia areata and Hashimoto's, plenty of patients over the years with alopecia areata by itself, and you can get better. You can recover. Now, I do want to point out very quickly that uh, alopecia areata is a non scarring hair loss. Now there is a scarring type of hair loss that you can find in Hashimoto's patients. Uh, it's pretty rare. I wasn't even going to make a video on it, but I'll stick it in here. And scarring alopecia is very often, in my experience, caused by phospholipid antibodies, which is another autoimmune condition. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty scary one because it can uh, cause a prothrombotic uh, state, meaning make it, makes it easier for you to clot. I just wanted to throw that in in case, for example, you're watching this and you actually know that you have a scarring alopecia. Well, that's very likely from fossil fluid antibodies. So again, same, same, rule, same rules. What it means is your immune system's out of control. What do you do about it? You got to get your immune system in control, but you got to work with a doctor who understands the test to do that uh, so they can best help you. So I will see you in the last video for part three on the three types of hair loss. We talked about number one, which is the diffuse thinning classic pattern of hypothyroid hair loss. We talked about why that happens. Uh, number two, we talked about in Hashimoto's, you can have alopecia areata, and what that means is your immune system is out of control. And in part three, we'll, we'll see what that one says too. See you then.